uh, Mr. Heppern here, and here's just uh, some information on um, Simple GUI. So um, a graphical user interface uses graphical components like windows, buttons, menus, text fields, icons, panels, and images, and sound. Okay, here's a little meme joke here. Home ex students foolishly think they have the best GUI, right? Okay, so uh, what happens with GUI here is that um, originally GUI was the AWT, which was... Um, the um, basically the operating system how it handles uh, graphical user interface but uh, the problem with using AWT is um, it changes with every different computer system like Microsoft, uh, Macintosh, uh, Android, you name it so when um, programmers came up with a way to make something that would work on all platforms and uh, one of those options was, was Swing and another option that came around was uh, SWT. Uh, and then later, when web programming became more important, they invented uh, JavaFX. Okay. So you can read about this uh, if you look at the web page later. But there's uh, some things that you will find in a, um, in, a, in a graphical user interface. So for one thing, you need, uh, you need a frame. So a frame is where everything's going to go in. It's kind of like where the, uh, the painter has to uh, paint things on their canvas inside a frame. Uh, or you can have like a window, which is basically um, like a frame, but doesn't have uh, any of the uh, useful tools. And then you can have your panels, where uh, you can where you can break your frame up into panels and do different things in different panels. Um, other than that, though, there's other things like labels. Labels are like uh, like headers, uh, titles, things where the user doesn't have to change the text. Uh, you can put in buttons. You can have a color chooser. Uh, checkbox. So, for example, this is what a color chooser looks like right here. You get to choose a color if the user wants to do that. Um, Checkboxes kind of look like this. This is when you give the user uh, different abilities to uh, choose different things uh, using a checkbox technique right here. Um, you can also have um, like radio buttons. So for example, if you want to give only specific options um, but only choose one thing instead of many. In a checkbox, you can have more than one option, but in a radio button, only one option, right? And of course, you can also have like lists. So you provide a list, and the user has to choose from a list. These are just some of the things you can get uh, in in Swing. There's combo boxes, text fields, where a user can provide information. Um, if you blank out what the user is doing, it's a password field, so that it only shows up as dots. A big text area. It's like instead of just one little line, it's a whole area that can be uh, like whole paragraph or whatever can be put in there. Uh, image icons for showing images. Scroll bars for going across and up and down in your frame if it's really large. Um, option panes. File chooser if you want the user to be able to choose something. A progress bar that goes across or vertically to show the progress of something. Sliders and spinners of course. So uh, you can find most of this information if you want at uh, Oracle. Java documentation. They go through all the different things that you, uh, with examples for um, all of these things. So now, um, if you want, you can download the, um, the the sample GUI that I have provided. And if you do that and unzip it, you'll see uh, see this. So um, there's different things. For example, what's the difference between a frame and a window? So if you take a look at the code here, um, I create a J frame called F, which is a frame. And I also make a window, W, which is just a window. I set how big they are, where they're going to be located, and you have to make them visible, like this. So um, once you compile that and run that, um, you can see the difference between a frame and a window. So for example, this is a frame. It's got like the minus, the uh, max, and the, uh, the x. The window doesn't have these options. It's not as useful. So basically a J frame is a window, but inside a frame, so you can make use of... Uh, these items. So I'm just going to reset that. Um, labels, what the labels look like. So I took this from a, uh, a tutorial uh, website. So these are just labels. You got a label can have an image with some text in it. It could just be some text or it could just be an image. These are different labels. So to see what that looks like. Um, so yes, I borrowed this from uh, from uh, Oracle's uh, web, page, web base. So this is how you make a label. Label equals new J label right there. Um, this is how you, um, and then if you want to, you can say where things are going to go, where's the text going to go. Uh, so I had bottom and centered. I also had an image icon, so that was in, that's where I got the image of Wonder Woman 
and put it into my labels. So labels can hold images, they can hold text, or they can hold both. Okay. Um, I have a label here, label 2 equals new J label, text only label. And then I had uh, just an image icon in my in my last one. And uh, you can go through uh, and see how the how the code works for this. This is uh, definitely um, modular in the way that it works. And that's what you definitely want to do. Okay. So I'm going to close that. All right. Uh, control buttons. This is what they look like. So I'm just going to run through that. So control buttons, you can uh, you can make the control buttons have images in them. You got your submit, your cancel, and your OK buttons. So for example, if I hit OK, OK, hit submit, submit, hit cancel, cancel, All right? Uh, so if you take a look at the code for that, um, this actually makes things happen. So um, let's see, where is that? Oh, there we go. Okay, so this is where you start using something called action listeners or uh, or adapters. So what I've done is I've added an action listener to the OK button. And when someone clicks on OK, it does public void action performed. And that's when it sets the status label that I had hiding at the bottom. OK button was clicked. So um, it's very important if you're going to have buttons doing things, you need to have these action performed um methods underneath the uh, listeners that you add to them. But uh, you can see that more in, in future examples as well. Uh, here's a uh, control demo for color. So I'm just going to try that one as well. Okay, so for this one here, you can look at the code later. But uh, here's a button. You click on it. It loads up the color chooser. You choose one, hit OK, and it changes the background. So the uh, code for that, it's not that difficult either. Um, so let's see, where is it? Okay, so uh, we made a button called choose button. So J button, choose button equals new J button. And it's got a, uh, it's uh, got what you're supposed to do, choose your background on it. So that shows up. Uh, and then the action performs and it sets the background color and it applies that to the, to the frame. So main frame, get compact, uh, compact pane, sorry, content pane set background color background color right there so there you go um there's also an example for uh an image icon uh, another control label a swing adapter demo instead um there's also some sample code for example uh here's a little program that i made um just as a demo that multiplies two numbers so you type in uh your uh your one number so for example 10 you, your other number like uh five um, you can either press enter and get the number, or if I change that to 50 and click on the multiply button, it does that. Also, this is checking to see where the mouse is located in the JFrame, and it's adjusting things a little bit. And it's also how to input um, different uh, images. So if you look at the, uh, the code for that right here, um, you can just go through and see how that was coded as well. So everything um, like... Um, the label, the image icon, the text fields, these are all inside the class. And then later I manipulate them. Yeah, so you can read through that if you want. Um, also, some other things that you can do is, uh, oh, here's a random number generator using my template. So um, for this one here, you can type in like a number from maybe uh, 10 to 1,000. And maybe I want uh, 25 random numbers. I click generate the numbers and I get my random numbers right there. It's not a, it's not a very difficult code either. You can take a look at this one, see how that works. Um, this one here I made a few years ago, horrible program though. Um, I would not do it this way again, but, uh, it's just a little battle simulator for at war. You just type in, um, how many units you have for each size. You hit start simulation and it runs through 10,000 simulations to calculate your chance of winning like 91%. But uh, the code actually for this one is, is not very nice. I don't like it. Um, other than that, though, there's some other things you can do. So, for example, you can actually add sound as well. Here's just one, one, one of many ways to add sound. So um, you click on the Do Stuff button. And you can hear um, a, um, a Star Trek sound in the background. Uh, it also sends information to a text box. So if you're thinking of doing a project with a text box, Someone clicks on a button and it provides information in the text box. You can see how that was done in this one right here. So I'm just going to type 
number here, do stuff. There we go. And I also like to send things to the uh, to the um, system console just to make sure things are working. It's a good way to error check things as well. Okay. Um, so now layouts. Well, no, one thing that's important is uh, use of layouts. So there's like flow layouts, border layouts, box layout, grid layout, and grid bag. Grid bag's the hardest one to use. I definitely try to stay away from that one. But uh, let's start off with the flow layout. The flow layout is just the most basic thing um, you can use for a layout. So uh, basically, just make your GUI in a line, and uh, if you adjust your box, it just moves things, you know, from left to right and then down if necessary. So it's it's the most basic layout you can get. Um, and then there's a border layout. Border layouts are really nice. Um, they divide the the screen into north, uh, south, east, east and west, uh, and center. So if I run this one here, there we go. So here I've got a, a north panel. I got a panel on my on my west, a panel on my east, a panel on my center, and a panel in my south. And then inside the panel, you can do whatever you want. For example, in the center panel, I put in a button, a picture, and a progress bar. Uh, in my north panel, I put in a J label and a text field. You can put whatever you want inside a panel. All right, but basically it breaks your GUI into uh, into five areas or five regions. So the top, the bottom, or north and south, uh, the left and right, or east and west, and then the center, or the middle, right there. And uh, if you try to adjust things, it tries to keep things still in the correct locations, like that. Okay. So I like this one. That was an easy one to use. I usually mix uh, border layouts with flow layouts. In fact, inside a border layout, you can um, each panel that you run uh, can have its own little layout. So, for example, um, in the north or top here, I actually used a flow layout inside the north um, panel. Okay. Now, uh, for a box layout, it kind of looks like this. This is good for calculators and things like that. When you make uh, a box layout, um, it pretty much makes things all the same size, okay? Might not be pretty though. Uh, then you got um, the grid layout. Let's take a look at a grid layout as well, right here. Okay, so a grid layout is, oh, sorry, that's more of um, <laughs> like, a, like a calculator. So everything's the same size. I got a grid, which is two by three right now. Um, and uh, there we go. And I'll show you where that, uh, where that code would be, where it says two and three. So let's just find that for you. It's near the bottom, probably. Mm -hmm. And let's see. Yeah, here we go. Three by two, right there. So I got uh, a grid, which is three by two, and then I also uh, set up the padding between between it, like ten pixels and five pixels as well. Okay. And then there's the grid bag. The grid bag is really horrible, though. It's 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 hard to use properly. Um, so here's a grid bag layout. It looks nice, but it doesn't always look nice. That's the problem, and it's it's hard to do. Um, I also used the grid bag layout for my battle simulator right here. So uh, here's just another quick GUI just to show you what it looks like. Okay. So here's a uh, sample calculator I found on the internet. So like one plus two equals. There we go. So this is using a uh, a grid layout as well to make this happen, at least for part of it. Um, and here is something called a wrap layout that I found online that you can add uh, as a potential optional layout. So I'm going to throw that in as well. Uh, so for this one here, um, it just makes it a little nicer looking than a regular flow layout, but it's still pretty much the same thing. Okay, so there you go. So for GUI, basically GUI is nice because... Um, a graphical user interface does look a lot prettier. It's more aesthetically pleasing. Um, and here's the one that you might want to base things off, the template GUI that I created for you to use a bit. So for the template GUI, it's just basically uh, using a border layout with flow layouts inside each, uh, each panel. Um, and it does things. And when I do stuff like this, it pops it into the system console just so I can see what's going on and into the text box and the code isn't that that difficult once you uh, if you go through it it's 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 not super complicated all right so a few things you need the the libraries for uh, for uh, for like the windows toolkit and swing um, 
And then after that, you try to keep things uh, split up. So for example, the first thing I do is um, I have my create and show GUI method, which is just going to build the build the GUI. Okay. Um, and then uh, anything like a uh, menu item where I need an action performed, it's going to do something right there. Uh, you can have an action performed call another method as well. That's what I like to do as well. Um, so for example, do stuff. Do stuff is another method which is called by the action performed by my button listener. And so when I call do stuff, uh, what does it do? It goes down here to do stuff and it adds things to the system console and to the text area, which I, I called area. If you want to add things to a text area, you just go area.append and then you just plug in what you want. If you want to skip a line, that's what the slash n is for right there. And then of course you need your main method. Uh, and so in this case here, I'm using the Java Swing Swing Utilities Invoke Later New Runnable. So it's making basically, uh, you know, a new uh, a new uh, process or a thread, I guess, in the in the in the computer. And it runs it. So public void run, create and show GUI, uh, and there you go. Uh, you get yourself a nice little modularized program for making the GUI. So I hope this helps, uh, and uh, yeah, definitely give it a shot. Try to make a little GUI uh, for your project if you get a chance. It'll uh, it'll make it look really nice. Okay, good luck.